Now we shall discuss about the ferrous minerals. We have seen in the previous discussion that minerals are broadly categorized into metallic, non-metallic and again into the energy minerals. So in the metallic category we have the ferrous minerals. In the ferrous the most important one is the iron mineral. The iron mineral actually gives a boost for the Indian industries. It is nearly three-fourth of all the metallic minerals are directly dependent on the iron available for us. It has been a very strong base for the development of all industries in the Indian context. Iron ore which is available for in India is a basic and the backbone for all the industries which are having the basic industries in our country. We also have fortunately good quality of iron available for us and this good quality of iron a finest quality of iron we are getting nearly 70 percent and a mixed combination of hematite and the magnetite where magnetite is a bit better quality when compared to hematite where hematite is up to 50 to 60 percent of the finest iron is available for us in India. So the most important mineral which we have for us in available on a larger scale and nearly three-fourth of the metallic minerals have a very very strong base for us. Three-fourth of the entire industries are found in this one and the iron ore the basic and the backbone quality or good product for every basic industry is the iron ore. Fortunately we have availability of good quality of iron the finest quality up to 70 percent the hematite and the magnetite up to 50 to 60 percent. Now let us move on to the regions where the iron ore is found or located for us. The major belts in India are four major belts where the huge availability of the iron ore is found in India. The first one is in Orissa and the Jharkhand belt. Orissa and the Jharkhand surrounding regions have the combination of the iron ore under the layers of the earth where the mining is done and the iron ore is extracted from there. And later we have Darg, Bastar and the Chandrapur belt which is located in Maharashtra and Chhattisgarh region which is having nearly 14 hematite iron ore mining centers which is having a finest quality of the iron ore available for us and available on a very larger scale. That is a special quality of the second belt that is Darg Bastar Chandrapur belt. And the third one is Ballari and Chitradurga, Chikmangalur and Tumkur. This is largely located, all places are located in Karnataka where it is located from the entire north of Karnataka to the south of Karnataka starting from Ballari which is uh, on the northern edge of uh, Karnataka well and moving on to the southern edges like Chitradurga, Chikmangalur and Tumkur all these are located at the very uh, southern parts of Karnataka. The entire north to south has been categorized into one belt where the availability of iron ore is available where we have the Obalapuram mining uh, uh, mines established here only and the miner Mr. Gali Janardhan Reddy also did lot of his mining at prime location at Ballari. And then moving on to the last category of the belt which is available iron ore for us is Maharashtra and the Goa belt where here also we have the huge availability of the iron ores found for us. So the basic industry which is having a boost and the backbone for the Indian industries and being a largest contributor for all the industries in India is the ferrous minerals iron ore. Iron ore has been a strong base and is providing a basic product for us the, all the industries and we also get the finest and the best quality of iron available in the India fortunately and the belts which are available for iron ore where iron ore is found in these regions in India is Orissa and the Jharkhand belt in the states of Orissa and Jharkhand, Darga, Bastar and Chandrapur belt states of Maharashtra and Chhattisgarh and the states like Ballari, Chitradurga, Chikmangalur and Tumkur belt that is in the entirely in the Karnataka region from north to south and moving on to the combination of Maharashtra and Goa belt in the state of Maharashtra and the region of Goa where the iron ores are available for us. That's how the iron ore is extracted in the Indian context. Now the next most important mineral coming under the category of the ferrous group of family or the ferrous family is manganese. Manganese is very very important mineral. It is used to make steel and also the ferromanganese alloys. 
in order to make steel you must and use the manganese combination otherwise you cannot make the steel to get it solidated in the same way ferromanganese alloys are also very important to make it useful for us 10 kgs of manganese is must and mandatory to make 1 ton of steel in order to make 1000 kgs of steel you need to use 1% of that that is 10 kgs of the manganese has to be added so that the steel gets consolidated it's not that only in steel we use this one we are using manganese in the combination of the bleaching powder in order to clean the our houses bleaching and also we are using in the insecticides and paints which we use in our day to day lives you know to kill the insects and also to color our houses paintings and all and we have the largest production from the state of Orissa which accounts for nearly one third of the entire India's production on regards to manganese is collected from Orissa or belt. So manganese is the second most important uh, mineral which is available for us in India and it is very very useful in making of steel and the ferromanganese alloys. 10 kgs of steel is being used must to make one ton of steel. 10 kgs of manganese is very very important to be added to get 1000 kgs of steel. It is also used in the making of bleaching powder. It is also used in the making of the insecticides and paints and also to understand the manganese is largely found in Orissa which is nearly accommodating for one third of the entire production of India's manganese production. Now moving on to understand the non-ferrous minerals. The non-ferrous minerals mainly are copper and bauxite. Copper, India has been a deficient country in the availability of copper because it has been a malleable object and ductile and good conductor of heat or electronics. When it comes to deficient, deficient means not available in the completely required level or required amount of the product is not available that is called deficient and coming to malleable malleable means when it is exposed to heat and when it can be formed into the form of thin layers and sheets malleable means it can be made as thin layers and sheets so copper in india is deficient and it is deficient because it is can be made as malleable it is ductile it is a very good conductor of heat and electricity and when we talk about the good conductors of electricity wood is a bad conductor of electricity whereas copper is a good conductor of electricity the energy passes through copper very fast and very soon so it is very useful to make electrical cables electronic items that's why copper is on high demand and in india unfortunately we don't have much availability of copper for us and next moving on to the possibilities where we have the availability of copper is at Balgat mines. The Balgat mines contribute in Madhya Pradesh for nearly 52 percentage of the entire available copper in India. And also we have Singbam district in Jharkhand where we also have the availability of copper. Copper, unfortunately India has very less availability of copper. Copper is a very very useful mineral because it is a malleable mineral where you can make sheets from copper and then it is a very good conductor of electricity and it is very useful to make electronic goods and the electronic items as well as it is very very important to have electronic cables and electronic goods where coming to the production of copper as we discussed earlier the production of copper is very less in India among that available percentage Balgat mines in Madhya Pradesh are being the largest contributors with nearly 52 percent whereas Singbam mines in Jharkhand are the second largest contributors of copper in our country. Moving on to bauxite. Bauxite and the bauxite deposits are the next part of our lesson. Bauxite is used in making of aluminium. Aluminium is extracted from the combination of bauxites. It is found under the rocks various varieties of rocks you find the aluminum silicates the aluminum silicates actually bauxite used to the rise of aluminum aluminum is found under the rocks whereas a combination of bauxite and the aluminum where aluminum is also very very important metal or a mineral for us because 
Aluminium is also used in the manufacturing of aeroplane industry where nowadays a modern means and the fastest means of transport being the aeroplane industry has a very large demand for the mineral of aluminium. Aluminium also conducts the same qualities as that of copper. Uh, it is very good for the combination of iron and gives lightness means a very light weight and also it is a very good conductor of electrical goods or electronics and same as a copper it is also having the nature of malleability. Malleability as I told you malleability means we can make thin sheets using this particular mineral. So bauxite and aluminium are very very useful minerals of the modern day and where is the possibility of availability of uh, bauxite for us. Bauxite deposits are found near Amarantak Plateau and the Michael Hills. Amarantak Plateau and the Michael Hills are being the largest contributors of the bauxite for us and the largest producer of aluminium is we have in Orissa at the Panchapatmali at the district of Korapat district that's how we have the availability of the non-ferrous minerals. The non-ferrous minerals main one is copper whereas copper in India we have deficit we have malleable nature for copper which gives special significance for copper it is a very good conductor of electrical goods and electricity which is found in the states of Madhya Pradesh and Jharkhand while we have bauxite which is another important mineral it also gives rise to the combination of aluminium where it is found in large amount it is combined with iron to get the light nature for the iron and also it is also having the features like copper like good conductor of electricity and the malleability whereas it is found in the Amarantha Plateau and also in the Michael Hills and in the parts of Orissa where you find huge deposits of bauxite and aluminium. Now let us move on to the non-metallic minerals. Now understanding the non-metallic minerals available in India the first non-metallics can be categorized into one is mica the other one is the rock minerals. Mica and the rock minerals are the two major non-metallic minerals which are available. In the non-metallic minerals we have the lime stone which is available for us in the non-metallic and rock where we get it in the form of rock. When we come to mica, mica is available abundantly in India where it is available in the form of series of plates and these series of plates are in very very thin sheets. These thin sheets if you line up around 1000 sheets also you may get only a few centimeters of height which means at this edge of width you can keep at least 1000 sheets of mica and this mica is available in different different colors for us like black, green, red, yellow, brown all are in clear colors well as it is having very low power loss if you pass electricity through this and it is having the insulation capacity or insulating capacity it is having the uh, resistance power to high voltage it can stop the high voltage power these all features make mica a specific instrument which is used in the electronic goods especially so in order to have the growth of electronic industries or the manufacturing of electronic products we need abundantly mica on a larger scale in india we find mica two states that is in jharkhand and rajasthan mainly and in some parts of nellore also in andhra pradesh we find the deposits of mica Mica is a very very useful mineral for electronic industry whereas it is availability itself shows that it can be used in a very very large and thin sheets because it is probably found in the form of thin sheets where even thousands of sheets also would line up to get only a few centimeters of width or height whereas in computers or in laptops and we nowadays prefer all the slim items so would like to prefer high something which is very thin so mica would be a very good alternative because mica is also having good resistance power of low power loss and insulating capacity and also it's very good to have high voltage resistor capacity for mica so these all are the adding up points for mica to be a very good source in order to use that particular mineral in making of the electronic items especially mobile phones laptops which are very thin in their nature and now moving on to the rock minerals as I mentioned for you in rock minerals we are dealing with the limestone. Lime is actually a combination of rock which is made up of calcium or calcium plus magnesium carbonates. That's why it has the thick combination. It is found under the sedimentary rocks 
the lime is found under the sedimentary rocks or the lime rocks are found under the sedimentary rocks uh, limestone generally where do we use we use limestone in the industry of cement industry where the basic raw material for cement industry is uh, limestone and in other in order to melt the iron and to have a blast furnace we need a very high heat reactor that is smelting iron ore is must and mandatory because then only you can separate the ore from the pure iron and get the uh, hematic or metallic iron for us which is required so smelting of iron ore is must and very important and in india we have huge availability of iron ore so the importance of limestone rocks has been improved or increased because of the it is used in the melting of the iron ore in the blast furnace so mica is used for making in the electronic products whereas limestone or lime rocks are used in making of cement industry and also in smelting of iron ore industry these are the two major non metallic industries which are found dominantly in the indian origin now we shall discuss about the conservation of minerals fortunately though india have many minerals but still if we do not use anything in a proper manner we would definitely lead into the exhausting of the minerals now if we take a brief jot down of the points where we can talk about the minerals human beings are highly dependent on the minerals we and in the introduction of the lesson itself has mentioned human life has become an indispensable part without the association of the minerals and later on it takes millions of years for the nature to create these minerals but we as human beings use extraordinary machinery equipment and daily drill out the available minerals on a larger basis in a day to day basis and these minerals are finite and they are not at all renewable at all so they are coming under the category of non renewable sources of energies or minerals they decrease if when we go on using continuously the minerals that would automatically result in the destruction and the decrease in the quality of the mineral what we are getting for us and we have to take the next possible alternatives such as like recycling and using the substitutes instead of using only the coal coal if you use on continuously go on using to generate thermal electricity as we go on using it continuously that would automatically result in the exhausting of the mineral called coal and whereas coal cannot be non uh, cannot be regenerated again so automatically it is a non renewable source of energy where it becomes to difficult to recycle that one so we should try to explore all the new possible alternatives other than only having coal energy like hydroelectricity like thermal electricity and then moving on to the wind energy solar energy so all the possible options we have to check it out so that to reduce the recycling or the decrease of the quality of the product or mineral which is coming for us and we should try for the next substitutes if we do not use our minerals properly and carefully if the mineral mining laws are not implemented properly that would definitely result in the hazarding of mining which is very very difficult and destruction for the entire mankind minerals are a dependable part of our life where it takes millions of years to form for them for the nature but it takes only a few years for us to squeeze off the entire mineral wealth which is available under the layers of the earth using the latest modern machinery and these minerals are available only in finite and in the non renewable format for us whereas the decrease of the quality would be the result of exhaustive use of these minerals and recycling is a very very difficult task for all of us and now moving on to the energy resources the energy resources are the resources which are used to generate energy energy is the most important item for all of us because starting from the day oning on switch oning the light to the day where we switch even we switch on the bed lights and we sleep so there is nothing which is left out without the use of electricity so the energy can be in different forms we are having habituated to closely associated with the forms of energy like electricity so the generation of electricity has been broadly categorized into the two major categories like conventional energy non conventional energy the conventional energy are the sources which are used in a traditional methods where you are using it from many years for example in the conventional energy we have the firewood coal petroleum 
natural gas, hydel and thermal electricity comes under the category of uh, conventional energy. Naturally which are occurring for us that comes under the category of uh, conventional energy. For example, firewood. We burn firewood to get fire. We use coal to burn that one. We use petroleum to drive the vehicles. We use natural gas for cooking. We use hydel and thermal power in our day to day requirements. When it comes to the non-conventional energy types, the non-conventional other than the regular usage of the conventional types, when we move on to the other category of energy resources that are the non-conventional types, those are solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, geothermal energy, biogas and finally the atomic energy. These are the non-conventional types of energies which are available for us. We discussed about the conservation of the minerals. We are highly dependent as human beings on the modern day, dependent on the minerals. It takes millions of years for the earth, for the nature to form those minerals. But it takes very few years for us to squeeze off the entire mineral wealth available for us. They are available in the finite and the non-renewable formats for us. Whereas the decrease of the quality would be the result of exhaustive usage of all the minerals. And recycling and substitute are to be seriously taken as a step for concern and the mining laws have to be implemented very strictly so that this kind of negative implications should not result. And moving on to understand about the energy resources, we have two major categories of energy resources, conventional type of resources and the non-conventional type of resources. The conventional type of resources are firewood, coal, petroleum, natural gas, hydel and thermal power. Whereas the non-conventional type of resources are solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, biogas and the atomic energy resources. These are the major energy resources available for us. Now we shall explicitly deal with conventional types of energy resources and the non-conventional types of energy resources.